All right, this is fourth grade, module six, lesson 12. And in this lesson, students are going to be uh, applying their basic understanding of fraction equivalences to add tenths and hundredths, particularly in terms of decimals. But really, we're looking at the uh, fraction versions of those decimal values. Uh, I think the next slide is going to make more sense of that. So let's get started. So suppose we had 3 tenths plus 4 hundredths. And the idea is we want to be able to add these. And, you know, just like you could say, well, 3 dogs plus 4 cats, you can't really add and get like 7 dogs or 7 cats or 7. You have to find some other label. And so there's a variety of ways that we can show how to add these two fractions. One uh, is using that place value chart. So I'm going to zoom in for a second. And we could say, well, taking that 3 tenths plus 4 hundredths, and the idea is, well, we could say, let's put 3 tenths, 1, 2, 3, and 4 hundredths. One, two, three, four. And then the idea is, well, if you're going to take one of these tenths and cash it in for hundredths, that means this tenth becomes ten hundredths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we can repeat that process with this tenth and this tenth. And we're going to get, let's see, for this tenth, we're going to get another 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 10 hundredths. And then for this tenth, we're going to get another 10 hundredths. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so those tenths have been, are gone because we exchanged them for hundredths. So in, in other words, what we can see is we could see that 3 tenths plus 4 hundredths equals, and then what did we end up with? Well, we ended up with 34 hundredths. So there's one way to show how to add 3 tenths plus 4 hundredths. Another way that we could do it is by using the area model. So if we looked at this and we said, well, okay, let's write down 3 tenths plus 4 hundredths. All right, 4 hundredths. And what would that look like? Well, the first thing we could do is we could shade in 3 tenths. So there's 1 tenth, 2 tenths, and 3 tenths. So there is our shading in of 3 tenths. And then, if we want to shade in that four hundredths, well, what are we going to have to do? Well, to shade in the four hundredths, we would have to cut this guy, and I want to do it in black, sh cut this guy into ten pieces. So I cut it in half, and then I'm going to cut each half into five pieces. So these are now hundredths, and if I want to shade in four of those hundredths, I'm going to shade in one, two, three, four. And now we can see, by kind of zooming out, we can use a little bit of logic. How much did we shade in altogether? Well, we know that each of these tenths is ten hundredths. So really, we shaded in, started with three tenths, then we shaded in four hundredths, but really that ends up being thirty-four hundredths, because each of these is ten hundredths, so that's 10, 20, 30, plus 4 more. So that's two different ways that we can show how to add 3 tenths plus 4 hundredths. And yet, the last way is probably the more most, you know, like more official looking. And the idea is saying, well, we know that 3 tenths, if we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 10, we get 31 hundredths. So that means we can exchange this 3 tenths for 30 hundredths plus 4 hundredths equals 34 hundredths. So we've got these three different ways to show 
the how to add these two fractions. We've got the place value method, we've got the area model, and then we've got what's really kind of like the standard algorithm, the, the idea of taking that tenths and multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by ten to get hundredths. And then we're able to put it right there and add thirty hundredths plus four hundredths. So that's the basic overview of the three methods. Now let's get started. So here they want us to specifically use the place value chart. So we've got, I'm going to skip this one because the example is already pretty much done for you. So we've got two tenths and three hundredths. So let's get started on that. So we've got two tenths and three hundredths. There we go. And then we know that we can cash in each of these tenths for hundredths. In fact, we can cash them in for each of them for ten hundredths. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we can do that a second time. And there we go. There's our tenths. They've been exchanged for hundredths. So now what did we end up with? Well, we had two tenths plus three hundredths. But now we can see that we ended up with twenty-three hundredths. So here is kind of like that those equivalent fractions methods, but they're doing it in terms of uh, units still. For example, four tenths, let's take a look at B. Four tenths plus eleven hundredths. Well, four tenths, we want students to recognize that that's forty hundredths. Imagine four strips of the area model. And so that ends up being forty hundredths plus the original 11 hundredths, and that gives us 51 hundredths. Now, if we want to look at this one here, so really what we're looking at is 43 hundredths plus 6 tenths. That's kind of where we're leading, and we want students to recognize that, well, 43 hundredths is still 43 hundredths, but it's right here. These 6 tenths, we want to turn those into... 60 hundredths, and that gives us 103 hundredths. So what would that look like using that kind of like that standard algorithm? Well, we would have our students think that we can multiply both the 6 and the 10 by 10. So the numerator and the denominator can each be multiplied by 10, and that gives us 43 hundredths plus 60 hundredths. And that equals 103 hundredths. And technically, that's all they're asking us for. But we do want our students to recognize um, that we could take out 100 hundredths, leaving 3 hundredths. So we can use a number bond and kind of decompose. And so that 100 one hundredths is equal to one whole plus the 3 hundredths left over. Now, they are, the directions are saying you can leave it as 103 hundredths. Here they're letting us have free reign, solve it any way we want, leave our answer as a decimal. So let's take a look at that 3 tenths plus 7 hundredths. And we're going to take that 3 tenths for a moment, and we know that we can multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 10 to get 30 hundredths. So that means this becomes 30 hundredths plus the original 7 hundredths right here. And that ends up being 37 hundredths. So I'm going through this really quickly, parents and teachers. So make sure you help your students go through this by allowing them to pause and rewind as necessary. The other thing I forgot to do is to say, hey, we need to write the answer as a decimal because it says so right here. So we're going to write 0 0.37. That's our answer. And here, what's different is this time we're going to be going over the 100 mark. And so we're, we want to simplify uh, because we want our students to write our answer as a decimal. So taking a look at this first one, we know that 5 tenths can be rewritten by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by 10. So that gives us 50 hundredths 
So now our equation becomes, and I'll do it in blue, 50 hundredths plus 53 hundredths, and that gives us 103 hundredths. And we, we can use that number bond to decompose and take out 100 one hundredths, leaving us with 3 hundredths left over. So this right here is equal to 1. And so we know that ends up being 1.03. Now why is it 1.03? Because these are 3 hundredths. That means in the tenths place we have nothing, but in the th hundredths place we have 3 dots if we were to do that dot method. Similarly down here, we know that 4 tenths can be rewritten by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by 10. So that gives us 40 hundredths, so we end up with 40 hundredths plus 78 hundredths. That ends up equaling 118 hundredths, and we want students to eventually see that that's 1.18. Now how would they do that? They might use number bonds to take out one whole, 100 one hundredths, or they could just go straight to that using mental math. It's up to you, parents and teachers. And lastly, it's just a word problem of the exact same kind of practice. The first day, we had 65 one-hundredths inch of rainwater. On the second day, we had 83 one-hundredths inch of rainwater. How, what's the total inches? Well, you add, and you're going to get 148 hundredths. We don't want our students to suddenly call that 200 down here, so because these are labels kind of like units, and uh, 148 hundredths, and that's equal to 1.48 inches of rainwater. Now, it doesn't say that we had to change it to a decimal, so if we wanted to, we could have left it as a fraction, and we could have called it 1 and 48 hundredths of an inch. And that wraps up fourth grade, module 6, lesson 12, understanding um, the fraction equivalents in order to add tenths and hundredths.